Hi, welcome to um, the January 2014 um, broadcast. I'm going to try my camera. We'll see what happens. I think we're going to have to do it without my camera this time. Let's find out. Sorry about this, guys. I'm uh, not at my home place and trying to do this on the road. It's been a, a crazy time. So I think this is just going to be an audio um, broadcast just so we can have a clear signal. Um, basically, 2014, if you saw the new videos that were posted, they were a little bit different than what we've been posting in the fall. Um, and I believe Rajana sent out an email describing it in brief, but I thought this would be a good opportunity to describe it more fully. Um, the videos are instrument families, and the first one was the woodwinds, and the saxophone, the clarinet, the berry sax, and tenor sax. Um, these are great opportunities. When I introduce the instruments to my kids, I love to use high school students. This has a dual purpose. Uh, one, and, and it's a big one, is that to elementary students, you and I both know that the high school students are their heroes. Uh, they look up to them, they want to be like them, so there's a lot more power and impact of having the high school band student introducing that instrument rather than me, the teacher who they are used to and see it all the time. Plus, I am not versed on playing every single one of those instruments. With the high school students, when you bring in their instrument, uh, they play it and they play it well, and it's a, just a nice win-win. It's also a great uh, time for a high school student sometimes doesn't realize the magic of talking to kids in that setting. And they get really turned on to, to being that mentor, that kind of student teacher, for instance. Um, the other reason I love to do that is it gives the kids an, a chance to experience it live. And when we hold up pictures or show video clips, um, that's great, and we don't want to stop doing that. But when you have the instrument, that physical instrument, right in front of you, and you're hearing that live sound in the room, it really makes a huge impact. We all know that if we go to a live concert, that that is far better than just listening to the recording. So it's the same kind of deal. So in the month of January and February, each one of the video clips will be a different instrument or um, a sampling of an instrument family. They're designed so you can see how we incorporated it with the students and, and you can see the exchanges. But Rajina also worked hard on editing it in a way that if you don't have a way to bring in a high school student or an artist in town, um, that you could use that video clip with your kids. And, and that could be of help as well. I usually do an instrument family um, kind of preview or a little bit of a unit in January. I use Cheryl Lavender's instrument family bingo kit. I love that. The sound clips that are in that are included are on um are just long enough so you can hear the quality, high quality sound of each instrument, but it's also short enough that you can keep it moving. I love to also use video clips from the internet, and there's a great um, there's a great new resource for teachers, which you will probably hear me talking about more that is fairly new or new to me. It's only been out a, a year or maybe two. It's called Mashplant, M-A-S-H-P-L-A-N-T, mashplant.com. It's free for teachers to sign up. The first time I went to the site, I was a little bit overwhelmed and did not understand how to use it. But now that I do, it is golden. You sign up, and then you can put your students in, or you can just use it for you, and you can pull in video clips that you want to use and create um, units and put it on what's called the cork board, which is basically your dashboard or your home place to pull, pull from. Now, if you have older kids, like upper elementary, actually middle school, high school, if you have all of those, this is there's a million ways you can use MASHPLAN. If you're giving um, private lessons, you can have a video clip of somebody who's doing an incredible job of teaching some little technique on an instrument, posting it, 
connecting it with that student who's playing that instrument. Then have the student go home and practice and videotape themselves or at least audio record themselves and they can post it and send it to you. And you can keep it private where just you and the student are linked or you can open it up to a group of students. If you want to open it up to the whole band or the woodwind section and they are going to each give critique on that student's performance or on the original one that you talked about. Uh, there's just so many ways you can use this. It's a great tool that you can use for connecting your kids, taking something to another level. It's not going to work that well for lower elementary. Now, how I think about it for lower el elementary, it's a place that can hold all of my sifted and sorted video clips that I absolutely love, and I can share them easily from mashplatin.com. Um, but it, when they get to be upper elementary and up, then it becomes an interactive tool. If you are giving lessons and you ask that student to go home and record themselves, either audio or video, post it, send it back to you, you'll get a little, if it's hooked to your smartphone or your computer or your device, you'll get a little pop-up that says that student has now sent you something for you to look at. You can look at it on the fly midweek before the next lesson and give them instant feedback. It works like a combination of Facebook and Twitter um, and social media, except it's closed to the community that you allow it to be um, to who you want in the community, whether it's just you and the student or you and all your students, and that can change all the time. So definitely worthwhile in checking out mashplant.com. Some other video clips that are perfect for instruments and instrument dem demonstrations, well, they're all out there everywhere, but a high quality set of those video clips are at Jazz at Lincoln Center, and the website is academy jalc.org. Um, it's great. It has tons of clips. It's kind of geared for the probably the band student or a private student to glean a higher level of things. But there are a lot of things that would be fabulous with elementary kids as well as you as long as you keep it um, short. So those are good. Down the road, there's going to be more instrument clips that are designed for lower elementary, um, which I'm working on with Jazz at Lincoln Center. So that's all in a process. I want to back up to the Freddie Review. You'll notice that the first lesson for January was almost a repeat of the second lesson of our school year. Um, that is on purpose. It's not because I'm being lazy. It is because in the month of January, it never fail, fails that you tend to have the most amount of students transferring in. We know especially, um, especially lately, there are kids that are moving in and out of our district all the time. But most parents either tend to move their kids into a new school system at the beginning of a school year or if they're needing to move at the middle of a school year they will wait till after the winter break and move in then. So I would always find that I had a handful of new students, one or two per grade level um, or per class that would come in and if I did not stop and review they were lost in what we were talking about. The rest of the kids and us that have been together for the whole year, we have a vocabulary that's now established. When I talk about Freddie and when Freddie's home, um, even the Every Good Boy Does Fine if it's the upper grades, we've already established that and I'm not having to reteach it. But your poor kids that come in brand new, especially the younger kids, they're kind of wondering, why are the rest of the kids so cracked up about this frog sitting at the front of the room? It has no personality or relevance to them. So I always take time in the month of January to quickly uh, go through each story. Now I do a story per class period, and I break it up a little bit depending on how many kids moved in and what's going on. But I tend to do the first story, the first class that they came in, then I give it a break on the next uh, class, do some other activities, and then I do the next Freddy book until we've made it through all the stories so that all the kids in the classroom are up to speed and they have relevance. As soon as they hear the first story, 
they too will be attached to Freddy because now that little green frog is not just a stuffed puppet um, frog at the front of the room, but now is Freddy the frog who has a personality because of the story. So it's really important to do that. As soon as all the stories are reviewed, and you've reviewed all kind of the basics um, along with the dynamics game, the shh, shh, baby sleeping. I said shh, shh, baby sleeping. What did you say? What did you say? Then you can quickly switch to piano, piano, baby sleeping. I said piano, piano, baby sleeping. Now you have everybody up to speed in that. And now from that point forward, after you've reviewed all these concepts the rest of the year, when you're talking about a listening piece or a piece of music that you're performing or rehearsing, you can begin to use those the vocabulary that you've already established with the rest of your class. So it's really important that you don't have any of your kids lost. We want to do the tempo game. So we do the tempo game with the kids so that they understand um, what they are and how to play. And after that, you're able to just to pop in and play that game along with the rest of the class. Um, what else was I Oh, yeah. So you're going to see in the incoming lessons that are going to be posted shortly, they will be a review. Now, in the review, we take time to do the story fully. With each one of them, I ask the rest of my class that's already heard it. Favorite stories with that kid. I also remind them, hey, don't give away the secret like the thumps. Don't tell them who the, thump who the thumping is until um, later on. We love to sneak peeks of the new student to see if they like it and if they get it and all that good stuff. So they've kind of become my helpers in introducing the um, and I'll I'll give you tips for each one that I do each book in the lesson plan so watch for that that'll be great the other thing I was thinking about uh, was the jumping back to the instrument families as I said before I usually introduce the instrument families in January I do the bingo game um, I do the bingo game the first time or without playing the bingo game but listening to the instrument holding up the posters there's some great instrument posters out there but now if you have a interactive uh, whiteboard or you're using the smart notebook files or Promethean it's very easy to pull in those instrument pictures in fact look in the gallery you're going to find pictures of the instruments that you can just pull in how Leonard puts out a nice instrument pack with nice visual posters that you can posters that can be physical or you can use on your active interactive whiteboard, whether that's smart board, Prometheum, Mimeo, whatever it is. And the same sound clips are embedded in those files. So those are all fabulous. After we've done a um, a kind of a overview of the instruments use this picture map that has all of the instruments that I've created for the kid it and then it passes out so every student has one in front of them on their on their desk or if they're sitting on the floor on the floor and then I play the in instrument sound it's gonna be the same instrument sound that goes with Cheryl Lavender's um, instrument bingo kit And I'm going to kind of guide them into the family, ask them to put their finger on the family that they, or their hand on the
or oh, not sure what happens. So I hope we're still going. Um, or just plastic bags or anything like that. The canisters are wonderful if you still have those around because they can become instrument shakers. Uh, after the bingo game. So anything can hold a little small amount of beans. In their ears or up their nose or um, throwing them at each other, playing little, you know, flipping them, flicking them across the table. I always establish the rules before we begin that the way to win is that you find five instruments in a family and put a bean on each one of them, and starting with the free space. If anyone does something that they should not be doing, if they're not doing their job, and I have them describe what that might be very quickly, but they know, they lose a bean. And that simply takes care of it. And it only takes one student doing something they should not do with their beans and then just stopping and quietly asking them to remove a bean from their card and everybody will, will do what they're supposed to. So it's very easy classroom management. If you do have one student that continues to do that, you just keep taking the beans away and, um, and then set them by the side you and you play together one-on-one. -on -one. I've never had trouble and I've been teaching well. And uh, that works very well because they understand that in order to win, they have to have beans on their card. And when you take one away, it makes it harder for them to win. Now, what do they win? 